What's up guys, my name is Koro Fujita. I wanted to do a quick tutorial series here um, for something simple um, to learn the basics of Quill. Um, even if you are advanced um, in Quill already and feel comfortable, um, make sure to still watch it because there might be some super valuable information for you here. Um, to be able to do something like this. So um, this is actually like um, those types of demo scenes that I actually conduct at my workshop. Um, those are like those exercises I give my students and I wanted to make it available for you guys. Um, I'm also gonna um, share the source file so you can check how I do things. So we're gonna cover painting first, basics of painting, then um, uh, different animation techniques. So I'm gonna cover anim brush, colorizing over time, and anything that's like real time. And then we go to advanced animation where you can do frame by frame and transform key animation. So let's start with the uh, uh, painting first. But before I start with that, you have this um, bottom left button, the menu button on your Oculus uh, controllers, touch controllers. You will have the button mapping that you can turn on and off. So I will refer to some of those functionalities here. So uh, look at your left hand, there's a grab tool, there's an alt trigger. Alt trigger is like really important. So make sure you know where it is because I'm gonna refer to that quite a bit. Then grab for the middle finger and um, grab for navigating through the scene. The right controller is a little bit more complicated. Just make sure to go through all these undo, redo, uh, tool size uh, up and down for changing the brush size and stuff like that. And that's all self-explanatory. One very important um, button that I always use is the toggle current tool and selection tool, which is the X button that you see up there. Uh, that is like super valuable um, and I'm gonna teach you why. And then down here you have a little bit, a few like um, super valuable like combinations. Um, might seem overwhelming first, but if you uh, dig deeper, it's actually not that complicated. But I'm gonna hide this for now, and we're gonna start with lesson one, the painting. So the goal is to basically, I want you guys to paint something and develop animation on top of it. So uh, the idea is that you paint vignettes like this first. So I'm gonna do this from scratch. So I'm not, it's not gonna be this pretty because I'm not gonna spend much time on it, but I want to show you guys the concept on how to do things in Quill. So let me um, hide all this and um, I leave the lesson one there and I create a new folder and call it one or something and create a new layer, right? So now first we need a piece of soil. So what I did here already is I detached the menu. Um, you can attach it back to your left hand. I prefer having my left hand free of the menu. I, most of you guys have probably the menu on your left hand and just tap it. Like I actually prefer uh, moving it out. Um, so in order to do this, you just grab the bottom corner or something, the gray area here, and grab and you can put it in space. So that way you can just um, have free hands, both hands free, and I like that better personally. But that, that's really a personal preference. You can also grab it anyway here and scale it up and down. If you want to um, have multiple panels, you can grab the window up here and just release more panels or close it right here, right? So this is how easy it is. Um, you can scale it up and down here, but I put it in space. For now, I will only need the paint window and maybe the layer panel. So you see the timeline is already going. I can just stop it, rewind it. And then this arrow up here will actually collapse the um, menu. Uh, so you have the old layer panel, which, uh, which is really cool for painting. All right, so uh, let's let's get started. So we're gonna um, choose a brush here, and then I'm I'm just gonna start painting a patch of soil here, right? But I want to turn on the globe icon here, which allows me to see the structure of the surface I'm creating, right? So I'm just like painting a patch of soil here right now, and. Um, I'm going to increase cognitive load bit by bit as I go on with the lesson. So I'm going to start simple first. And you can use the colorizer and colorize a little bit um, 
let's say colorize that and bring down the opacity here and then you add a little bit of variation here you can also turn off the globe so you really know what you're doing and then maybe a little bit of a brighter spot that's too bright let's go darker something like this and with with the um let me bring back the button mapping with the b button up there on your right hand side that's to pick color so you can pick color here you can see like let me paint like a red blob here you can um with the b button you can pick the colors right so you can do that the x button uh the a button will delete strokes so you can hover over um strokes here when they blink orange you can hit x and uh sorry a and it will delete the stroke i'm gonna undo this for now so now uh, i'm gonna go to the layer panel so call this soil uh, to rename it you can either like just single tap the selected layer or double tap an, another layer right so i accidentally um, showed these um other folders so and we have the soil now um and then we need a watering can right so watering can okay so this is the watering can i will choose something like gray and right now i'm really um not looking oh green might be good i'm not looking for like a perfect drawing so i'm just gonna do something like this and make it like really quick so um you asked like how did i do the line tool like how do I do this and do this at the same time? So here the alt trigger comes into place, right? Remember alt trigger is on the left hand side, the index finger trigger. When you paint with a regular um, brush tool, it will be like a freehand drawing tool. If you hold the alt trigger, um, alt trigger pressed on your left hand, then it becomes a line tool, which is really cool. So the alt trigger has like different um, functionalities for each uh, tool. Some of the tools don't have any alternative functionality, but for the straight line tool, for example, you have the straight line, free form straight line. But if you hold the alt trigger, it will snap onto the world grid. So this is like super useful because you can quickly build like buildings or something. Um, uh, and you know that it's, everything is going to be quite perpendicular. Um, for the colorizer for the eraser there's no alternative tool for the selection tool um you will have um alt will deselect and half press alt will add to selection so for example if you have something selected like this and i want to add this portion then um if you press full it's gonna subtract selection that's not what you want if you do half press you can add to selection right so this is like um, um how you can multi-select stuff um selecting empty space boom will just just like in photoshop or something you will deselect stuff um grab tool so this is the grab tool um in the grab tool you will have um an inner radius and an outer radius so um basically um there you will have, um, you can change the fall off radius here. So if, if something's like, uh, let me go to the water, if something is like completely, um, if you go 100% influence like that, then you move everything. So you can actually move the whole watering can like this. If you change the influence area like this, it will stretch, right? So this is like super powerful as well. And then thick and thin tool is self-explanatory. Uh, single click, like, trigger um, thickens it and if you hold the alt um, left alt uh, button it will thin it right and then for nudge there's no al alternative tool and for uh, optimization there's no alternative either okay so then that's um, the alt functionalities for um, the tools themselves so um, now I already do it like with muscle memory, but um, another important shortcut is the X button, which is like toggle. You can see toggle selection, current tool and selection tool, right? So that's like super important because then you can just select strokes and m move it around like where you want. Okay, so um, that's so much for the alt trigger for now. Um, I brought it up because um, sometimes I, for example, when I want to do a character or something, I can do it like this freehand, but then I can just quickly switch to the line tool and create um, limbs like quickly like this, which is like super powerful. So you don't have to switch to the line tool. You can freehand um, draw like that. 
but back to our watering can. So now we're gonna colorize this here. And we also need, um, you know what, Let, let's make it blue because the plant's gonna be green. So um, here you can, uh, in the colorizer tool, you can change the hue and you can just quickly change the hue like this. There's like all those different types of modes that you also know from other software packages. And now um, I'm gonna create the flower, so I'm gonna create a new layer and a uh, flower. Again, I'm not going for like a beauty contest or something, so it's not gonna be pretty, but um, I'm gonna draw something like this, something like this, and then I'm going to colorize it. So it has some cool gradients here. And then of course, um, I also need um, the flower itself. So I'm gonna use something like, you know what, maybe I will just use the line tool here, create like a paddle, and then you can duplicate it like this. So duplicate, right? Uh, another thing um, um, that I want to cover, but um, I'm gonna cover it like in a second. So I'm just gonna duplicate it like this. <coughs> and then also create the center of the flower just with a line brush stroke and put it in there. So, and maybe I use the grab tool now to add a little bit of variation here and maybe rotating the leaves a little bit so now we have the flower there's like a little gap let me close that gap so this is cool um let me also now there's a little cool trick you can select these at least because the light is not coming from the top so it's not gonna um it's, it's not going to um it should be in shadow the bottom side of the um petals so i'm just gonna um, bring this down a little here and colorize it with like a little bluish tone and then it looks like it's in shadow which is kind of nice and then i see that there's a hole down there let's close it off with the round brush here something like this so this is looking pretty cool uh now i want to uh cover duplication so we have the soil layer here right i want to reuse this for my next vignette so for the next vignette um i'm gonna let me remove the labels here so for the next vignette i want uh, a fire pit right so i'm going to uh, select the soil that i have and of course i could also just go here and say like duplicate and transform this over but that's too slow for me right because then i have to merge and stuff like that so i don't want to do this so i'm going to select this and hit a to delete so there's a quicker way to do this right so you can basically select the soil hold the alt trigger remember the left alt trigger on the left hand side um so left alt trigger i should just say alt trigger because there's only one alt trigger and then grab so it doesn't matter which tool you're on if you grab your, with your um, middle finger on your right hand side or whatever your dominant hand is then you can just create a duplicate so this is cool because you can just quickly duplicate a bunch of soil patches you can undo 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 but what you can also do is you can actually um duplicate alongside axes and stuff like that so when you have something selected like this so let me select this you can press the right joystick button as a button, boom, and it will show you like this manipulator, right? So with this manipulator, you can actually grab and move it in like, if you grab the square, you can move it in, uh, in a plane. So um, you lock axis basically. And if you grab the center, you will just quick move it in all axis. But um, if you grab axis, you can just um rotate it and lock axis as desired so this is like super powerful and why is this powerful you can also um quill has this cool thing called uh duplicate repeat transform or transform repeat when you basically select something here and duplicate it along an axis or something right or rotate something like this then you can just hit redo and it will keep redoing with offset right with the value that you changed previously so this is like super super powerful um because you can quickly do some um really complex shapes like something like this 
boom, 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 right? So you have like a complex shape like this, and then you do something like this, and duplicate, 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 and like in no time you, you have something like really complex easily. So um, now you might ask, how did I move the pivot here, right? So you can either grab the center and use the right index finger trigger to move because the middle finger will move the whole object. But with the index finger, you can actually move, grab the center and move the pivot. You can also grab any axis here and move it, right? With the index finger trigger. With the middle finger, you would grab the thing. With the index finger, you can grab the gimbal. So what the index finger in this gimbal mode does too is when on um, translation and on grabbing the center it moves the, um, the pivot but if you um, grab with the index finger trigger the rotation axis then you can just snap rotate right. So this is really cool because if you want like a specific spacing like let's say I want this spacing I can, this is a 90 degree uh, quarter spacing, you can actually do this really easily and accurately. So that's so much to duplication because I wanted you guys to know that how powerful this thing is. So I'm going to use from now on a lot of duplication. So um, for example, I paint here some firewood, right? So I only um, bother to create like one piece of wood. So I like this piece of wood. And now I notice, oh no, I painted on the soil layer. I don't want to do this, right? So no worries, you can just quickly select it, hit new layer, and then it is separated into a new layer. So this is how you can always like um, um, uh, move things into a new layer. And I can actually colorize it a little bit. Uh, let me add some variation here and spend some time on this um, cool little wood piece. But then once I'm ready, I can just basically put it here, right? And with while you're grabbing a selection, you can go up and down with the tool size, um, joystick up and down to scale it into place, right? So I want now to duplicate this log and you can just simply just uh, hold the alt trigger and duplicate something like this and you have like this cool little uh, wood pile. You can also select the whole thing and move it a little bit or select the whole thing and do more, right? Make it smaller. Yeah, but that's not what I want to do. But basically um, the possibilities are limitless, right? So this is like a cool wood pile here. Um, the third thing I want to do is I'm going to go back to the soil here and um, duplicate it one more time. And I want to create uh, grass. So I'm gonna create some grass here. Um, again, like uh, I use maybe the flat brush here. And then I can either change the brush size while I'm painting. So I can do something like this, which is like also really cool. It also works uh, with a line tool. So you can do something like this, you know, which is like really useful sometimes. Um, but you can also turn on the auto taper here and then if you paint something like this you get like this nice taper here. I'm gonna turn it off for now and um, start colorizing this one grass bit. So always think of like how you can reuse things down the line um, because that will save a lot of time right so you don't have to do it multiple times. So now I have like a piece of grass here and then I can just alt trigger duplicate then select the three, pe three pieces, Alt, Duplicate, and I may always make sure to rotate my wrist um, when I duplicate so I get the random randomness right, happening here. So okay, now I have the grass here and oops, I painted on the soil layer again. You know, that doesn't matter because then you can just quickly select the grass and hit new layer. I don't think I uh, renamed the wood layer, so I'm gonna just rename the wood, wood layer. Uh, we just call it wood. Okay, now we have the grass. The grass is a little bit too big, so I'm gonna make it smaller, but we need a little bit more grass. I'm just gonna make more. I'm just gonna rotate it so it doesn't look as repetitive. We do more grass. And then I want to also put some trash in it. So now this time I remember trash. I'm gonna do on a new layer. It doesn't have to be, you know, you can select everything, but um, I go to the line tool and then create like a little soda bottle or something. And um, this is like something simple like this and put it in there. And maybe some 
what I like is like uh, painting like Chinese takeout. So I'm gonna use the flat brush here and then we can just duplicate like this and uh, maybe also the bottom. Colorize it a little bit. It's a little bit dirty there. So something like this and then we need the flaps right so for the flaps i'm gonna just do something like this change the scale while i'm drawing and maybe flaps go like this something like this doesn't have to be accurate for this uh you know this is just uh to demonstrate something and maybe we have like a little chicken logo or something mm something like this oops select it and just put it there there okay so now we have the trash uh, i might want to and um, just grab a brush and just add a, a few overlaps here you know so it looks like it's been there for a while let me do one more thing so the grass uh, you see that the grass is a little bit glowing so you can go to multiply or something and choose a darker green and then just darken it a little bit so it's just more um uh fits the lighting more so um this was the paint basics and uh let's go on with lesson two which is basic and animation All right, so uh, welcome back to this next section of the tutorial. Um, basically, now I have created those vignettes, right? Like the, the three vignettes in painting. Now I want to add some life to it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to duplicate this whole folder that I created in the first lesson. So this one, I call it two because this is lesson two. And then with the move tool here, the four arrows move, you can just move it over to the right. What you guys can do, you can just build on top of what you created. You don't have to duplicate it like that, but I think for this tutorial, it would make sense to show it step by step. So you can digest it better, right? So now, um, I want to move the watering can to a different position and I want to like rotate this whole vignette a little bit so it's facing us better. Instead of like going into those layers, there's it's this cool little function for the selection tool. Like right now I can't select it, right? Because the group is selected. So if I select the flower, I can only select the flower. But if you go to the selection tool here, you can hit select in all visible unlocked layers. What it does is that you can now select anything that's visible and unlocked, right? So I can select this and just simply rotate it like that. And I can even select the flower here and say like, I want the flower to face this way because it's prettier. You can do that. So this is not only powerful because you don't have to like do like crazy layer management, but also because you can select something like this and duplicate it, right? The cool thing about it is that all the layers like all the strokes may uh, stay in the um, corresponding layers. So the flowers stay in the flower layer and stuff like that. And this is like super useful when you want, for example, to create like a, let me create an example real quick. So you have like a tree, right? And then you create like a new layer for the canopy. So this is the canopy, right? Then you can just duplicate, 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 duplicate. And then if you want to only colorize the canopy, and let's say those are complex trees that are hard to select, you have the canopy still on a separate layer. So what I can do is like I can just go to the colorizing tool and change the color without affecting anything else, right? So um, this is like super, super useful because now I can go to the tree, tree bark and then change the color without affecting uh, anything else. So this is like good for layer management. I can select also quickly everything and just hit A to delete. So th those are like, like really cool little tricks that um, make your workflow really efficient. So let's move the um, watering can a little bit on top of um, the uh, flower and everything is set up for animation. All right, next step timeline so remember i hit the timeline here let's um bring it back again you have a little slider here um where you can grab and adjust the ratio so if you have like long names you know they might get cropped you can just quickly slide to reveal 
the layer names here. This is like really useful too. So now um, you see that uh, I have, well, those are new layers that I just created, so I can just delete those. I don't need those. But you have flower, water, and wood, trash, grass, and soil, right? So um, for this exercise, um, I want to create a new layer. So I want to let water flow out of this. So I'm going to create a new layer and call it water. Right? So for this now, I want to use the anim brush to let the water flow out of the watering can. So the way to do this is basically you have to have a new layer and create empty frames. So how does it work? So you see when you put your thumb on the left um, joystick here, it will show a head-up display, which um, shows you um, up is new empty frame, down is hold frame, left and right is frame forward, frame backwards. So if I go um, right, 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 I'm pressing the right joystick, to, uh, left joystick to the right, you will see that I'm going frame forward and frame backwards, left and right. Now, if I hold the Alt trigger while my thumb is on resting on the thumbstick, you will see that it changes functionality. So it's like fast forward, um, rewind, delete frame, and duplicate frame. The center is always placed, so if I hit play, you will see that the playhead starts running. If you hit it again, it will stop. Then Alt trigger and rewind. Alt trigger and left will rewind and the play will, head will jump. So let me show this again. So Alt and rewind will jump to the uh, beginning of the timeline. So those are um, little shortcuts you need to get used to. So what we need for the water, because we want to animate with an anim brush, let's create 15 empty frames. In order to do this, make sure you rewind or Alt and go back and hold up for about 15 frames. Now you see that I created 15 empty frames, right? Empty frames um, will show like this. The moment you have, um, let me draw something here. The moment you have a stroke in there, the frame will become solid, right? So this is how you know that those are empty frames. Now, the last frame is held. So if I have a stroke on the last frame, it will be held. That's not what we want, right? What we want is that it should loop. So here, up here, you can say loop. And now when I hit play, you will see that it will keep looping. So zooming in, zoom out on the timeline is um, tool size up and down. And if you do it here, you will scroll. You can scroll here, but if you're in the timeline, it will, uh, the cursor will zoom into where your cursor is, not the cursor, the timeline will zoom into where your cursor is. So this is like also very useful. Let me stop the animation for now, rewind, and then I choose a color. Let me bring the color palette down here. I choose a color for the water. Let's choose something like this, like a blue. And then in the uh, tools panel, I'm gonna change the lifespan of the brush to like 0.0. 10 seconds or something, or 11, that's fine. And then I'm gonna hit play. And then I'm gonna go to the watering can and just let the water flow out of it. I just draw lines, and maybe they bounce off the petals, just like this, right? So now they, and maybe they just fall and flow too. You can just boom, flow flow alongside the leaves and stuff like that. So basically um, I can I can um, mimic the water movement and maybe I, like here's my brush, I can maybe add some splashes too for collision, you know. So in, within no time I can have something like this. Now I want the flower to react, right? So now we're going to stop the animation and you see the onion skinning. Onion skin controls are here. You can turn it on and off and you can change like what you want to see up here. Like let's say previous frame and uh, next frame I want to be visible. And you can alter these strokes at any time. So this is like um, how you can go frame by frame. Now I go to the flower and of course you don't see onion skinning because the flower only has one frame currently. <clears throat> so make sure you... Um, Rewind, so it's like Alt, Trigger, and Left to rewind. And then now, instead of creating empty frames, because if you do, it will, you will see an onion skin, because basically it's going to show you the previous frame, undo this. We want to duplicate frames. So to do this, Alt, Trigger. Hold the Alt, Trigger, and then it changes to duplicate frame, right, at the top. 
right here. So basically what I'm going to do now is like I press up, 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 also around 15 times. And now you see I duplicated 15 times the flower. I also want to loop this and hit play. And now what you can do now is that it's basically looping 15 frames over and over again. And what you can do now, you can basically uh, use a nudge tool and nudge the flower over time. So you can pretend that it's like reacting to the water. So all I'm doing is I'm triggering it and wiggling it, right? And then I can also make the radius bigger, encompass the whole flower, and then let it wiggle like this. And maybe the leaves need some wiggle too, and they wiggle more at the end and less at the bottom. And now all of a sudden it looks like it's like reacting to the water, which is like really, really cool. You can emphasize the movement, you know, you can also do something like this, you know, but you don't want to do that. That looks weird. Okay, this is so much for um, Adam Brush and um, Nudge over time. And now we're going to go to the fire. So we're going to do the same thing. So we can, you can just leave that on, you, know, you, you don't have to worry about it. You create a new, f new layer and call it fire, right? So now we're going to stop the animation and rewind it. So we make sure we create frames at the beginning of the um, timeline. And let's create like maybe 20 frames this time. 20 empty frames. So you see those are 20 empty frames and we're going to loop it. Right? So hit play and choose a color for the fire. Something like this. And let's make the lifespan a little bit longer. So the lifespan basically it determines how long the stroke is visible per frame. So if I make it long, you can actually do something like this, right? This is like um, useful for other stuff but fire. So for fire, we want to like um, have something like this. And what I'm gonna do for the fire is while I'm drawing it up, I'm I'm basically changing the brush size with the joystick down, so that way. It tapers nicely to the top, right? So and sometimes I also like to like add like little line strokes, you know. And sometimes you can just keep drawing, keep drawing. And what I'm doing is I'm just doing something like this. So I have some uh, random fire movement going on here, right? And then maybe I want to move, um, put some other colors in there as well. And then just keep drawing the fire, right? Now I want this fire to really glow. How do I do this? So for example, I can color dodge over time as well. So let's make it a little bit stronger here. Bring in a bright color and then just hold it in like an airbrush and just keep pressing. And you see, we get like this nice, nice gradient glow. So this is pretty cool, right? Now, you. <clears throat> um, the wood is not reacting, the ground is not reacting. We want to fix that too. So we have the wood on one layer for this purpose. So let's stop the animation, go to the back of the um, beginning of the timeline and duplicate the frame maybe, maybe like 10 times. 10 times should be enough. And then I hit loop, hit play. And now with the color dodge, I'm going to go a little bit redder and then I'm just going to tap the wood a few times with the trigger. Tap meaning like I just click it, so I create like a flicker. And you might be able to hear my click. I'm like tap, 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 tap. So that way I can create like this little glow. glow. It's a little bit too red, so I'm gonna remove it a little bit and um, make a little, add a little bit more yellow here too. So I want the ground to react as well now, right? So the ground is not reacting. So if I, if you remember from lesson one, I put the soil all on separate layers. No, all on one layer, that's what I mean. What I want now is to put the soil on a separate layer. Make sure the selection, select an all visible unlock layers is turned off. And then I select just the soil and hit new layer and maybe put it under the firewood, right? There's this fire soil soil so now um, i have this soil isolated and now for the fire glow i want probably like maybe five frames or something so i'm gonna duplicate this soil one two three four five six six frames is fine i'm gonna hit loop hit play and then um with uh color dodge again i just 
tap the soil a few times and you see it's reacting to the fire and maybe the center is like really bright so maybe i go like towards white so maybe the center is bright so now you create the illusion of glow right which is like pretty powerful all right so now we have the fire now let's go to um the grass over here so we have the grass and um, I want the grass to blow in the wind, right? So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the beginning of the timeline. And guess what? I'm going to duplicate the, uh, the frame. So I hold Alt, duplicate 15 times. You can do more, but 15 is a good number, right? Hit loop again, hit play. And then we go to the nudge tool again. And then press the trigger keep holding the trigger and you just gently brush through the grass and voila you have animated grass in the wind right so this is this was pretty easy now i want <clears throat> this trash in in this pile so basically um i want to add some flies so let me call this layer flies and now i'm gonna stop the animation go to the back <clears throat> Um, beginning I mean create empty frames just like what I we did with the water over here I'm gonna create now maybe let's do a long, longer animation maybe it's like 50 frames or something right hit loop hit play and for flies I want the animation brush duration to be really short because they fly really fast and then I'm just gonna draw with the brush while the timeline is playing and then I'm just going to animate a bunch of flies, right? So I'm just clicking and holding the trigger at this point. I'm not letting go of it. So it's like the flies will like multiply over time, just like in real life, right? And then you can also fly it over to the fire and then... Zzz, oh, it died. And then it will just mimic your hand movement, right? So like, this is like really, really cool. So at this point, you can also fly it like anywhere, you know, it can fly over to the water, you know, and fly around the water and come back, you know, and maybe there's another fly that dies in the fire, right? So you have now like all these kind of flies flying around. This looks kind of gross, so I'm going to undo the last one. <laughs> and um, lastly, I want to also have a butterfly flying, making this pretty again because the flies are kind of gross. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to create a new layer create butterflies oh, butterfly butterfly okay um stop the animation go to the beginning and then i'm gonna create a butterfly i want maybe four seconds right so i'm gonna create like a hundred frames just keep holding up until you reach a hundred approximately a hundred see if i can stop it 101 is fine i'm gonna loop and this is four seconds now, about four seconds, right? I can choose a color for the butterfly, maybe yellow will be good. I choose like the flat brush here and then um, adjust the duration a little bit. And then I'm just gonna wiggle my brush and paint, uh, move my hand like a butterfly would move. So basically I hold the trigger and start moving like a butterfly, right? And let it fly in the circle and there you go. Now you have a butterfly. So um, this is for basics of animation. So we have how we know now how we paint, right? Basic techniques on that. We know how we can use the anim brush and the um, colorizing over time. Anything that you can do in real time. This is like super powerful um, and you can do it really quickly like this, which is kind of insane. So um, this is part two and stay tuned for part three, three of the tutorial. All right, so uh, at the beginning of the lesson, I was showing you the lessons, so let me hide these. Um, let me show these again. So basically it was like, we covered painting, basic animation, and now it comes to advanced animation. Advanced animation techniques, yeah, lesson three. So let's get after it. So how do we do this? Um, let me bring back my two vignettes that I already created. And then I create a new folder called lesson three, right? So this is gonna be three. 
And then I'm going to create, first of all, a piece of ground. So I'm going to stop the animation because I, this is distracting when it's moving. You don't have to do this, but it's fine. I, um, you, you can if you want to. <laughs> so this is the ground, right? And then I'm going to choose a color, maybe like something, like, something darker like this. And I want the ground to be parallel to the grid. So what I'm going to do is I go to the line tool and hold the alt trigger to snap the ground to the grid. So you, you learn snapping before in lesson one, right? But this is, this is where it comes in handy. If you don't have a grid in place, you will still know that this is perpendicular to the world you're creating. So um, then I want to cover, uh, I want to create a bouncing ball. So either you can use like the line tool and do like um, one short stroke for a ball, but I want to show you the advanced duplication technique. Um, basically, uh, what I like to do is like you create like a half circle like this. You select it, move the gimbal to the center, right, just like this. And then with um, Alt trigger selected, you duplicate uh, and rotate along the Y axis in this case, and you just keep hitting redo. So when you hit redo, you can see it just creates like this um, uh, and not loft, uh, what do you call it, lathed surface. And then with a grab tool, you can make it like really nice. And then the cool thing about this is um, if you ha just have a line stroke, right? Like, like, like a line stroke like that. With a grab tool, you won't be able to deform the stroke uh, um, non-linear deform is not possible, right? It's it's only gonna be like um, the width of the stroke won't change. But if you have multiple strokes like this, you can actually use it to sculpt things, right? So you can create a face like this, or you know, a head shape and stuff like that, which is like really useful. And also, it allows you to do smooth gradients. So, for example, if you colorize it here from the top top lid ball, you know, you can just create smooth gradients like that, which is like really nice. So I'm going to put the ball here <clears throat> and there's few things you can do. So um, let me do two, two different balls. So one, I'm going to animate frame by frame. So the way to do this is like either I can, so I noticed that I did this thing again where I painted both items on the same layer. If you're not, you just select it and create new layer, and then you have it separated into a new layer. I'm gonna separate this guy too, so I don't accidentally select it. And this is um, ball one, ball one. That's fine. And this is ball two. So we have this, and then I can do frame by frame animation by just basically hitting like. Um, Alt duplicate frame, and then I modify the ball, right? And then Alt duplicate frame modify. So now, if I go frame by frame back and forth, you already have like an animation. But this takes way too long, right? Like because you have to like adjust, modify, adjust, and stuff like that. So um, let me remove the animation here by clicking the trash icon here. And there's like this cool tool, tool in the transform panel, cool functionality called Animate Duplicate Transform Selection. Something I covered in um, other tutorials as well. But basically, um, when you select it and you duplicate the strokes, it will automatically create a new frame. See that? So it will automatically create a new frame for you every time you duplicate, right? So this is like super, super useful because now you have an animation already, right? So now the the cool thing about it is that you can just select it and then I'm going to hide the gimbal and then say like, dupli like duplicate, oops, that's not what I wanted. Duplicate, 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 bounce. And then it, and the ball slows down at the top. It's a bouncing ball, right? And then it's falling, 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 falling. And let me turn on the loop so I can actually see the last frame. So I see that I, I kind of offset it by accident. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna just um, adjust it with a grab tool this time. So I'm going to remember you can change the influence area by holding the alt trigger on your left hand side. And I make the influence area to 100% and I can just go through the entire animation and just adjust the position 
until it matches. Okay, this is good enough. If I had hit play now, you can see like the ball, the ball is already bouncing really nicely, right? But it's lacking a little bit of um, uh, squash and stretch, and maybe um, the time it's hitting the ground is a little bit too short. So what I'm gonna do is like here. At the beginning, I was just going to duplicate a frame. So basically, I have another frame here inserted. Then I'm going to turn the influence area of the grab tool off, right? It's um, lower. And then I just squash the ball like this, right? So now you have boom. Maybe squash it a little bit more. And then here, it's stretching, stretching, stretching. Stretching, so I'm just gonna go frame forward, frame by frame, and then up there it's starting to stretch again, stretch again, stretch again, stretch again, and then maybe stretch a little bit. And if I hit play now, now it's like looks really cool, right? Now, if you have an animation like that, you can either select it over time and duplicate it. Right, so yeah, you can actually hold an animation in your hand, which is like kind of magical, but then it's like really hard to because it's playing back, it's really hard to tell where it is, right? Uh, so I'm gonna undo this. So, what you can do is you can actually hit the transform key, right? Bring the gimbal back. Where's the gimbal? Um, I think I have to like reset the pivot so it's like right here. And then with Alt, I can duplicate the ball like this, and another time like this. And you see, like it cre it created two new layers, right? Now you can offset the animation. You can simply do it by just grabbing the side and move it back. Now I have a bouncing ball offset, right? Now I can also go back here and offset it differently. Like let's say, make it even shorter, like this. And it's not, the variation is not big enough, so I'm gonna make sure that you really notice the offset. So let me do something like this and hit play. Yeah, this is really nice. So this looks really organic, right? Now, um, what's really powerful about this is like, if I merge these now to one layer, boom, boom, it actually maintains the offset. Right, so now you can actually duplicate this whole thing and maybe rotate it by 90 degrees, push it back, and then hit play. Right, but they will like still move at the same rate. But what if I then offset this? Oops, I wanted to do this and move it back, and now you have like even crazier animation, right? And then you can also like scale these guys down. And um, just make sure you can turn all onion skin on here, um, all, and just see where it would intersect, where the animation would intersect with the um, with the ground. So you're just gonna match the collision here. Maybe I will rotate it a little, and then um, I hit play. And then you have this beautiful, those beautiful bouncing balls in no time. And um, there's also another thing I want to cover for the bouncing ball. If you have this guy here, and you want to um, change the ball, bouncing ball after the fact, because right now, if you want to change the color here of these bouncing balls here, um, I can actually merge them, so I only have like uh, one layer. It's gonna be difficult because if I change the color here, it will change it only over time, right? So it will start to flicker, which is like a cool effect. I kind of like it, so I might like keep it, but it's not necessarily what I want, right? So this this looks like really cool, but uh, I wanted them to uniformly um, change color. So for that, um, you would have to use keyframes because you want to just move the single frame. So keyframes don't have as much flexibility as um, frame by frame, but the cool thing is you can actually combine b those two mechanics if you want to. So for the second ball, I'm just gonna set keyframes. So I'm gonna set a keyframe here. So basically here, a keyframe types up here. So this is opacity keyframes, this is transform keyframes. Transform keyframes 
react on transforms layer transforms right so basically i can create a keyframe here and you see the transform um happening here and then the i want the bounce to be the same length so i'm gonna create another keyframe here and i want to now um create another keyframe in the center it's not evenly spaced but it doesn't matter in this case so basically i'm gonna hit this right and before i change the value i make sure that i set a keyframe and then um, I'm going to reset the pivot so I have it in the center. And then I just go straight up. Right? So now it's going to be stepped, curved, and you can select all keyframes here and change the interpolation to linear. Then it does this weird movement like this. It will only do it once, right? So in order to loop keyframed animation, you can't just hit loop. This is not going to do anything because uh, um, this loop is only meant for frame by frame. In order to be able to uh, loop keyframed animation, you have to create a sequence out of it. How do I do this? So we have like a new group, new sequence layer, and new paint layer, right? And here you can actually import image layer, 3D models, uh, sound, and so those are like import things that I will cover in a different video. But in this case, we create a new sequence. So then we put this into this uh, new sequence layer, the ball, right? Make sure the playhead is at the end of the animation. And then in the sequence, like you actually have the option to loop. So now you can see that it's looping. So you will see the ball. Um, animation looping like this, right? So a sequence layer um, is basically similar to um, a group. So any s sequence can become a group again, right? So this is like nothing different than a group. But if you basically select a sequence, um, make it a sequence, you are able to basically create loops out of um, groups. So this is the only way how you can um, actually loop keyframe animations. Now you can change um, the tangents. So whenever it um, comes down, I want this to bounce off like this. So now it should bounce just like uh, the bouncing ball here. Uh, let me see. Actually, I think one loop is we can actually make, uh, so we can, the, the cool thing about the keyframe animation is that you can actually change the length. I can basically um, go in here, remove the loop, and move the uh, keyframes with a grab. With a right hand grab, you can actually grab keyframes and translate them in the timeline right so this is like really cool there's actually no copy paste so if you want the first frame to match with the last frame make sure to keyframe somewhere back here so you have the initial position ready if you want to create a loop and that is currently like an inconvenience that you have to live with but um basically you create like a, a loop here and then then you see like um the animation is much smoother right but i don't like it i actually want to make it a little bit faster here so all i'm gonna do is like i'm gonna change the keyframe and change the loop point in this layer boom right so now i have the ball jumping like this and then the the good thing about this so you can't manipulate the squash and stretch here but what you can manipulate is the color so if you want to like um change the hue to something crazy like this here you can just um, simply go into that layer and change it and it will change it because you only have one frame animated right also important thing to note that you see like that the colorful bouncing balls here like are moving a little bit like um at a lower frame rate and that is because um the keyframe interpolations and interpolated keys interpolate at 90 frames per second so it's like super smooth right so um this is basically how quickly you can do this i'm gonna quickly also show you guys how you can animate something like a walk cycle so for the walk cycle um we're gonna create a new layer and call it like guy or something and we're gonna create like um a little body here something like this Oops. So here, um, I have to make sure 
remember to always turn off animate duplicate transform selection because that can um, confuse you down the line. So we making the legs here maybe we select the whole guy and make him a little bit smaller right so you you could do it the traditional way like basically um animating each frame by frame and then you basically um you go to the beginning you duplicate the frame and then you do like uh, the passing position here right um you can just select and manipulate each frame to your needs and then you have this right and then you go to the third frame and then you do the contact position on the other side right? let me hide the gimbal i don't need the gimbal so this is the contact position on the other side it's a little bit cumbersome it takes a little bit of time it's still way faster than any traditional animation but then we have this and then we need one more passing position um, for this leg where it goes up just like this and this comes down like this and this comes down and this comes forward so now um you you have already like um a working walk cycle so if i cycle this it's gonna be super fast right so um basically uh, i want to put frames in between so um for that you can hold by pressing down on the left joystick you can hold each frame for like maybe three frames So now it's like basically spaced out and now the walk will read as a walk already, right? So this is one way to do it. And then you can like at any time you can put in-betweens in there. So let's say you want, um, you turn on the onion skinning here. And let's say you want an in-between here. You can simply like go to that in-between frame, hold alt and duplicate frame and put in the in-between just like this, right? So now you have like, already like a cool in between there so then this is how you can do post to post animation it's like really simple just how we know it from traditional animation but there's a bunch of shortcuts you can do right um some of you guys that are proficient in like tools like flash you will know this technique but what what you can do is like you can basically animate like a leg separately first so let me and put the leg on a separate layer right and then i'm just gonna um like quickly do like a pass of like um this is the contact position this is the passing position right and then we have the extreme on the other side just like this and then I go back here, and after this, we have the breakdown, right? Something like this. And then after this, we have move the leg over here. So we have boom, boom. And then we have the passing position. So here, after the passing position, um, the leg was going to stretch like this. And then after this, we go to this and then i want to loop this actually it will come back like this and then we need one more frame like this so if i hit play you see um this is um moving really fast but i want to animate on um two is not on once so what i can do is like right now i have this layer i can simply hit the times two and it will space it out for me so now I have like, um, uh, I'm animating on twos. It's a very useful function to double your frame rate, right? <coughs> frame count, I mean. Now what I can do is I just um, go to this layer and I um, basically duplicate it and move it to the other side. And then I shift it, right? So I shift it to the middle, something like this. Right. So um, what it does, uh, let me see, I have to remove the leg on the other side. So I think I need to go one more frame, one more frame, something like this. So now I have like um, uh, both sides like working like this, right? So, so, so they're offset. Um, they're not perfectly offset, I think. I have to move it one frame up something like this let's see if this works yeah this works better so now you see that um it's already like a cool walk cycle and i want the body to move towards it right um uh, 
then you can like either animate the body uh, separately. So I'm gonna um, separate the body and the head um, into a new layer. So I have this, right? And then I can either, uh, I can animate the arms, but let me remove the arms because you understand the concept, it's the same as the legs. But I want to move the body in a different way now, right? So basically uh, I have the body here uh, on a separate layer, call it body. Rewind the animation, and I know that a full cycle is um, basically 16 frames long. Uh, yeah, 16 frames, frames long. So what I'm gonna do is I duplicate the body 16 times, create 16 frames, and hit loop. Right now I hit play and use the grab tool and move one, two, three, four. Right, and now you can like have like a up and down movement already. So this. These are just techniques that you can use, and maybe you can move the head differently, like with a little follow through here. One, two, three, four. So you get like um, cool um, animation very quickly. And at this point, you can also um, uh, duplicate it, right? Oops. Let's, let's, group. let's group all this. So I can group it and then set pivot. And duplicate it, right? And then duplicate, repeat, transform. And then at the same time, you can also then um, offset your animation if needed. So you can offset it a little bit. And then all the animations will offset accordingly, which is kind of easy and quick to do, right? So, um, this is how you can do frame by frame animation and you can combine um grab tool animation transform keys and uh, of course now you can like um let me delete this these are kind of distracting um what you can do now is that you can animate this guy in a sequence right so this is like the last thing i'm gonna cover is basically um we have this walking guy and then i, I want him to walk around right so let let Let's let him walk around in a circle because that's like a little bit more complicated. So to do this, I'm gonna bring back the um, gimbal and and just gonna um, move it down here. So I wanted to let him walk in circles, right? Maybe in a big circle like this. So I'm gonna let him walk around in a circle like this. Um, basically, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a keyframe here. And I'm gonna create like let's say he walks around in four seconds. So I go to like the four seconds mark here and create another keyframe here. So uh, Quill will always choose the shortest distance to the next keyframe. So you can't just turn it one three sixty degrees and then it will understand that it went the like it it only ch chooses the distance between two frames. So this is not going to work if you just wanna um um animate 360 right so you have to do it in quadrants so to do this i'm going to turn on the record key so the record key what it does is um once the record key is active whatever you move it will create it's like auto keying and um, other software tools right so what i'm going to do is like i'm going to the rotation axis y and rotate with the index finger which basically allows me like three rotations is basically a, a quarter and then I'm gonna move it by quarters. Three, one more, three, and then one more. One, two, three, and then the last one is already set, right? And then I'm gonna select all of them and create a linear interpolation. And if I hit play, you will see that he's like walking around um, in a circle so i want to know um basically uh i want to um uh, loop the animation so i'm going to loop the animation by again putting it into a sequence so you have to create a new sequence put the group now into the sequence make sure you're on the last keyframe here because that's the loop point you want to find hit the sequence hit loop there and the moment you hit play you have this guy walking around and then you can also move him in space right so so he's like circling those bouncing balls 
So this is basically um, an overview of like the different things you can do. Um, I could go much deeper into this and make more complex animations by nesting layers and stuff like that. Um, but I think this will give you guys enough food to like work with and uh, to really get used to uh, the VR workflow, which is like super efficient and fast. So I hope this helps. I hope this you guys enjoy this tutorial. Um, even if you're beginners, make sure to do one run of this because um, these, there's some workflow tips and tricks that will accelerate your process that you might have not known before. So I'm going to do um, more videos on advanced sequencing and stuff like that. Um, but uh, this is the first round covering paint basics, animation basics, and advanced animation. All right, hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.